you're going to see a bunch of runners when uh, the Browning Indians start to play both offensively and defensively. But before we get to the basketball, it's time to meet Deb Young with Montana Power. Ship game between Browning and Stevensville. We asked six reporters, and here's what we heard. You know, you've got some guys who are already out there shilling Stevensville already. Joe Paisley of the Montana Standard says Browning, they'll run Steve I into the ground. Ryle Cummings of the Missoulian, and that's close to Stevensville, says Stevensville, it's their year. Their guards are better than people think they are. Travis Elam, who's with MyPrepTeam.com, says Browning because it's going to be four quarters of pressure. Fritz Neighbor of the Billings Gazette says Steve I, it's their year. Browning saw Griffith, but but uh, Seifert is even going to be better. Well, that's an interesting view. Kurt back of the Class A state championship game on Wayland Tires Montana High School Championships. And Ron Davis for the third year in a row, the Yellow Jackets, Coach Keith Chambers, 6'9", John Seifert, are in the championship game. They haven't won one yet. Is the third time going to be the charm? Well, I think it is. They've done it different this time. For the first time, they're not here as the Western 8 champions. They came in as the number two after Whitefish beat them. So they got that loss out of their system over at Divisionals. I think they're ready to play. They're going to have to come out and set the tempo tonight. The big guy's going to have to clog the middle, and they're going to have to press from the beginning and try to slow the Indians down. Not too many people have been successful at that. They're going to have to do that to win tonight. I think they'll get it on their third try. They had a guy come off the bench, Jay Tavish, last night to join... Uh, uh, Carson or Carson Curley guy spindly guy but he took this thing by the throat last night and and brought the uh, Indians from an 11 point deficit to beat Butte Central and get Browning into the championship Blackfeet tribe has a lot of pride going here well they do and Leo Bullchild the viewers are going to see tonight he is something special he's got the ability to control tempo he'll get up and down the floor for Browning that's going to be a big key watch Leo tonight watch him shoot that runner in the paint like nobody else a great night of basketball is ahead on Wayland Montana High School Championships. We'll be back with starting line. And here's how our two opponents got here tonight. Joe, take a run through it. Well, if you can beat the Dillon Beavers, you got yourself a solid club. Uh, Stevensville knocked them off 70 to 64. Then they ran past Glendive uh, uh, 57 to 45. Then on the Browning side, you got to remember how Browning got here. They were the third place finisher in the Central A. And they really played better, I thought, than anybody in that Central A except for one game against Haver. That was that first game where they got knocked off, but they came through. They beat Butte Central last night, 56 to 53. Avenged the first game of the year season loss to Butte Central. So they are for real, and this is just great enjoyment right here. This is what high school basketball is all about. Now we got a change. We uh, coming out and uh, 44 is Eric Butterfly, or is it Aaron McLean? Eric yeah. Butterfly has changed to 44 on your list there, Joe. So you want to check that out? There's your starting lineup. Full Child, Spoon Hunter, they're good. Then you have Johnson Seifert, the big guy. He's going to St. Louis, and he controls the tip. And we're underway in the state championship game for 2000. Two Cinderellas facing off, looking for the slipper. They working around. Stevensville taking their time. This is something they wanted to do against that uh, zone defense of the Indians. And Joe, the Indians give you a lot of chance to beat them, but you got to do it on offense. You do. They, they, they'll take some, some shots that, that are poor, and they'll turn the ball over at times. But that's when you have to, to go at it. This is a great way to control tempo. They're going against the 1-3-1 one, one right now, Ronnie. And what Brownie's trying to do is they're trying to front. They're trying to front down low on Cypress, but that's a way to lock it up from the beginning. Tyson Johnson with the tray. Here come the Indians. They bring it down out top, working it around. And right away, there's the man you've been wanting to see. Alvin Spoon Hunter, he's very good off the dribble. Fantastic uh, ball handler out there. There's that 32 minutes of press that you're going to see. You said it's 32 minutes of hell when you play the Indians, because they just don't stop, and they're taking it down. They are in such great condition, as Edmo was the one who put it back in that time. They are just fantastic at boxing chaos on the floor. There's Trombley with another steal for Browning. And Trombley, just, he does a great job on defense. He's kind of a defensive star of this Indian team. He is. He's a great defender. He stays in front of players. He's able to get his shot off. You see that shot right there that Edmo just hit? That's what Browning will do. They won't go inside. They won't give Cypher the ability to block a shot. They'll pull it out on him about that eight-footer and just try to can that. Steve at that time uh, gets the ball out. Steve I comes out. They, they slowed it down and broke the press with just 
good ball move. You know, if we had a time of possession clock, Stevensville's probably had it more than Browning has, but Browning's got more points. They just score so quickly. They go into the big guy, and they front him in back him. They're not going to let him have the ball. So they come back to the three, and Travis gets it. Lies Travis Spivey, Jr. And it's a tie ball game. The Indians have it. What a great start. Hit it from the outside is Stevensville. And you see Browning do what they do best, that runner inside. And Spoon Hunter throws it up, but the big guy comes away with it. And you got to watch every pass when you play the Indians because there's always somebody ready to take it away from you. Oh, yeah, they're great at reading passing lanes. Another three on the outside for Steve Ivey. They can't get it to go down. The shot was off by Curley. You notice Stevensville shot this time quicker. Time before that, a little quicker. First time they were more patient. Browning kind of dangles the worm out there. They say, hey, try to run with us. Try to run this up pace with us, and they get you. That's that floor you talk about, Joe. And knocking it down was uh, Bullchild. Now, they've all, the numbers are different than the numbers that we had when they, uh, we had the program, so we're playing catch-up on the numbers. A three-pointer doesn't go down, but the rebound by the big guy, and he's it back underneath, and Seeper gets his first two. That's what John's got to be effective at doing. He can own Browning down low in the block. They're going to give that to him. He's got to get offensive put back. Look at the ball around the outside. Bullchild takes it over on the side, and here comes the long three. A good job fighting for the rebound underneath was traveling. He kicks it off into the hands of Edmo, and Edmo has six. And here's that pressure out of Meigs. They come at you with that full court pressure. And a long throw away, and molestation of Carson Curley down underneath. And I'll tell you what, that was a kind of a freak throw, but it worked for Steve. I. Watch Bull Child on the dribble here. He won't, you can't block his shot. You cannot get to him. He'll pull up in time, and he'll get it off. Butterfly name for the foul. And at the line, Carson Curley came over from Hamilton. And he gets his first point of the ball game. Carson. Curley brothers made the transfer over to Steve Ike. Carson, just a 5 foot 11 inch sophomore. You're going to have to make your free throw. Brown's going to foul you. They'll send you to the line. Gets one, misses the other, but the follow won't go. And there's the big guy. Seifert to clear it up and clean it up for four now. That's one of those things Brown will do. They'll allow you to to get some putbacks, and that's what you have to take advantage of. That's what we were saying. They'll give you chances to beat him, and that's where they'll give you a chance to beat him on those offensive glass. And here's a steal by Travis. Travis clears it out. Curly back to Travis, and they're on the run. Stevensville. Crossover step. Going to be a little bit of travel there, but that's good defense. Reaching out, slowing it back. We talked about putbacks, Ron, and we see it here on the replay. Browning, not a real good team at screening out. They don't screen out that time. Nice rebound pulled down by Curley, and then you see Big John on the putback. Nice. Can't go over the back when you're four feet higher than the other guy in the air. He's got such a great frame to play at St. Louis. He'll do well in the big, bigger leagues. He's a tough, tough player. McDonald, who comes in, put it here, that one out. McDonald throws it high in the air and bounces back down. That thing, that thing was way above the top of the shot clock. And that's as close as Browning's going to bring it inside. They, they don't want any part of John Seifert. And he blocked seven and a half shots a game, and he's probably adjusted about 12 to 15. Here's the long three by Stevensville. Won't happen. They clear it away and come on the run. Butterfly with the board. And McDonald's going to take it in. Nobody stops him down. He's going against the big guy. He has to pick it back up. Indians, uh, like you said, Joe, run kind of a wheel uh, offense. They're always moving the ball around. It's that Harlan Blowtrotter look, and they're trying to score. They're trying to create it right from the free throw line. Nice board. McDonald, again, they almost lose the ball on the, that outlet pass because there's always one of the Indians there ready to steal it from them. Well, if Browning is there, they're not going to allow that three-point shot. Steve Ives made some, and they've been successful, but but their, their philosophy of Browning is that they're going to shoot that long three-pointer, we're going to get a long rebound, and that's going to send us in transition that much quicker. Good job by Steve Ives slowing it down. Here comes that long three from Stevensville. Doesn't happen. In a corner, rebound of Browning. Going the other way, we're going to have a foul whistle. Getting the leg out there was Tyson Johnson. He'll pick up his first foul. That's one way you slow down their running game. Yeah, you, you have to you have to get on it right away. you got to stop that dribble penetration from the beginning to see the chase down, and they're off. Look at Bullchild. He says, I am out of here. He was off to the races, but got slowed down by the leg. Now, watch the boot hunter handle the ball. He is just fantastic with the dribble. Kicks it over to the left side. Bullchild, Bullchild back over Spoon Hunter. And the board coming down to Stevensville. Again, pressure all over. Kicks it out to the big guy. Seifert takes it down, and he's going to... 
had the ball knocked out of bounds. I think it was Bullhead Child who got there. And Clayton Curley's been fantastic on the board. He's six foot two and senior. He's ripped down four so far for Steve I. Goes over to his younger brother on the far side. Back out on top. Carson over to Clayton. Clayton puts a head fake on. He's about to seep it on the baseline. They're trying to work that ball, trying to go inside. But boy, the minute that ball goes in, look at that. They're all over. Curley fires the three. Not going to happen. And right now, the Indians have it the way they want it. Definitely. They're, they're giving up that three-pointer. They're flying down the court in transition. Down inside. You know, they don't have that the shot. If you watch the uh, the players for the uh, Browning Indians, they don't have a shot where they have to have set up and follow through and everything. They all have a, an adjusted quick-release shot. Well, and it's difficult. We, we've only seen Cypher really get an opportunity to block one shot, and that was McDonald's, and that one went in. But it is going to make it difficult. Nice job by time. He's got three. Sophomore drains it. And it's a one-point lead for Stevensville. But the long ball from the outside changes all that. Spoon Hunter with the three. He now has five in the ball. Actually, it was Trombley who hit that? I think that was Trombley. Drained it. So Trombley gets it. Yeah, we're working the ball now back outside. You notice how long Browning had the ball and they scored. It was about four seconds. That time, Steve I had it for a good 20. Browning going to get one up quick again. Coming back the other way. The Indians, another one of those scoops and a put back, and it's not going to happen in the foul. Doing a good job coming in and crashing the boards is Eric Butterfly. You know, we talked about breaking down on dribble penetration, and when it happens, when you break down on dribble penetration, you see uh, Trombley's three-pointer there. When you break down on dribble, dribble penetration, what that does is it opens up backside boards, and Eric Butterfly is very good at reading that. That time he read it beautifully, and that's why he's being rewarded at the line. And Butterfly puts it up. He gets his first point of the ball game. You know, Joe, something I noticed when I was watching the uh, Browning Indians warm up. Well, one guy shooting free throws. You know how teams always shoot free throws? One guy shooting free throws. There's another guy shooting threes in the perimeter. The guy who's next in line, he gets warm up with threes. The ball just comes out. But the Indians get it. They put it up. And a foul. Going to be called on Stevensville. Right in front of all the Stevensville bench. And they were to have Zach Tri uh, Tapic. Now this young guy is a guy who came on last night did some good stuff, Joe. Six foot five inch senior, junior. But look at how Bullchild moves his body to draw that foul. You cannot find him in the air. He puts it up and gets it down. So Bullchild with three now. Tabic, who uh, his brother's playing at Montana Tech, played here last year. Bullchild's been getting 20, 25 a game here since divisional. Was only averaging 13 and a half in the regular season, but he has just found his groove. Tabic on the back door. Won't go. Too hard, but a foul going to be called. That's that worm right there. That's biting the hook. When Browning wants you to try to score quickly, and Tabic that time bit the hook, Browning not going to give you an easy shot down low. You've got to really be able to complete. You'll see Browning. They want this. They want this shot to go up. They want that tempo to be increased. They don't want Steve I sitting in that half court. Tabnick goes in line shoot, too. You know, Larry Ferguson from Butte Central said it perfectly when he said, how can you tell your guys not to shoot at an open layup? And you know when they do, you're playing right into their game. It's so enticing. The other thing he said is something we've seen so far is that's a good time. Good job by Tadvik making both free throws. They'll give you a two because, like you said, they're coming down to shoot the three. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll trade it off with you. They'll take it. But right now they're taking it inside. And McDonald is there to rip down the board, but it's taken away from him by Carson. Actually, yeah, I know it was Clayton Curley who came away with that one. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's going over to Stevensville. Five rebounds by Clayton Curley. He's been a monster on the boards. I think there's a few bluebirds in this building. There you see a lot of the Browning faithful. They were the ones that were leading the cheer. That's a good look at McDonald. This first quarter has gone quickly. Oh, boy. Last 19 seconds. Stevensville going to look for the last shot. On top of it, Clayton Curley. Kicks it over to Johnson, who's already hit one free. Now they go into Tebbit. Right side. Final seconds. Trying to get something off. Three, two, one. Curley puts it up. Won't go, and that's the end of one. For the Browning Indians, out in front by three in the Class A State Championship. Stay with us.
City Center is where you're camping out, Joe. Nice swimming pool. I checked in, got in the hot tub, got in the swimming pool, got the kids going. You better enjoy that. See if it goes high in the air, rip down the board. How about that rebound by John Seifert up there? Seifert went high and just ripped her out of there, and they need the big boy to become more of this game. They do, and Browning, you got to give them credit. They've taken away right now. Seifert's sitting at the top of the key. They're trying to get him the ball. There's Carlson with the long three. It's not going to happen, and that's what the Indians want you to do. They do. They want the long three. They'll get the rebound. They'll take it back. They'll get that thing up in 10 seconds. Right away, up they go with it. They don't waste a whole lot of time, and McDonald goes on the chase, and he's out of bounds. I'll tell you what, I like this McDonald, Mike McDonald. He's a hustler. Here's what they're doing to Seinfeld down low. They're just surrounding him. Wherever he's going, he's getting a crowd. You see three Browning players right around him. Real difficult to try to get the ball into Big John's hands tonight. And we're going the other way. Stevensville with the ball, trending by three. You know, the shot that we just saw that time down by Spoon Hunter, that's what they'll do. Browning will give you chances. They'll put up some four shots, and you have to take advantage of it right now if you're Steve on. Stevensville's been passing the threes, and they try to go into Seifert, but he's going to kick it back out. Seifert really not an offensive power. They trap it, trap down on the baseline. Seifert's been uh, more of a defensive player. He averages about 14, 15 rebounds and seven or eight block shots. This is good by Steve I, though. They're taking air out of the ball. Slow this game down. And the fans for uh, the Indians are saying, come on, play the game. But you know what? This is what you have to do against them. You can't get into their game. And their fans are smart. They know what they want. And they forced it right there. They got Seifert to put the ball on the floor 10 feet away, and here they come. And they just do a little of that hop pass stuff. Just kind of hop and pass and shoot off. That's the runner. That's Leo Bullchild at his best. He's got six to runner on the baseline. Wow. And they, they have that runner down to an arc. We've got a timeout. We want to talk it over. The Indians lead it. We're in the state championship. Don't go away. On the corner. Look at this runner. Look at that. Look at the head stay still. Nobody can do that like Leo Bullchild. He's great. He hits the runner, and he gives his squad a five-point lead here in the state class eight championship. Stevensville, they've been here three times. This is their third in a row. And they want to come away with one. And they're looking to make it happen here. It's their third state championship game in a row for this squad. Well, right. Coach Chambers also his fourth state championship. I believe it was 94, 95, somewhere in there. 92. Where they lost, lost to Butte Central. In 92. And so, and one only one other team has lost uh, three in a row, being in the state championship three years in a row. And we've lost a three in a row. That was Butte Central back in the 20s. So it's... Uh, what kind of a cross between Rocky Erickson and Pat Carney with all this knowledge you got? Hey, I got a lot of the program. Learned to read while, we were, while you were away. <laughs> while I was swimming with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, we keep it going. Back at the round. Stevensville moves the ball. Tries to make things happen. They're going to go for the long three, and they drain it. And that's Tyson Johnson's second three-pointer. And he's really been the only one to rip it from outside. Right away, McDonald's down underneath. They get a little swat on that ball as it went up by sight. Shot to the outside, and the big boy brings it down, Joe, but he's mugged right away. He's like, honey, bumblebees just come right to him. Back out to him on top. Touch pass over to Carlson, and he's going to set it up. And a 2018 ball game. We're down to the two-point lead for the Browning Indians. Indians has been kind of quiet on offense. Uh, after that quick jump, they haven't been able to get much going, but we got a whistle and a foul down underneath. The Browning, they'll go through spurts where they, they have those four shots. And this is something Steve I's got to do. Be patient, move the ball, take it in, throw it out. Get yourself set up for an open three. Good and the by John. Well, they have the penetration, too, and they kicked it back out. Here's another one from the corner. Not going to happen. There's that long board. And look at Browning come down the floor. Old child rips it down, brings it down probably. Floats to the inside. Doesn't happen. Then the big guy comes in and wrecks everybody's party and rips down the board. Take advantage of it right now if you're Steve I. A four shot, four shot selection. Turn that into your favor. And I the three and fire the three. And again, not making it. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, right now the three has uh, been against Stevensville. Nice switch up, nice change up. But the big boy brings down the board again, and we're going the other way. Johnson did a great job of eliminating second-chance shots for Browning. Browning very good on the putbacks. Seifert pulling down everything close. Seifert clears the board, and it's a two-point ball game with four minutes to go here in the half. Class A State Championship. Ron Davis, Joe McClaffney on the call. From the corner, the three again won't happen. Lottery by to get it. Here they come. 
Indians on the run, dishing it out. And the shot won't happen going the other way with Johnson. Say now run with you. Johnson puts up the shot, gets it, he'll go to the line. Big, big play for Tyson Johnson. Tyson just a sophomore, as we mentioned, as he's come to play tonight. But Brownie, they got you on the hook right now. You're running. You're enjoying this part of the game if you're Stevensville. It's not enough, but the tempo's picking up. Look at the movement. The left hand, the lefty. Oh, that's a tough shot. A little scoop. The circus is in town, Joe, on that one. And, you know, you said it earlier. It's like the Browning Indians are putting you where they want you. They're, they're fish. They're setting that hook, and they're reeling you in. They're calling the foul on the child. But they set that hook. They got you to jump. And all of a sudden, they're going to reel you in because they got you playing a fast-paced game, and that's what they do best. And they've made mistakes. They've come down, and they've shot some poor shots. They, they'll allow you to stay into the thing, but you have to be smart if you're Stevens, though. You can't get into that run with them because they'll beat you if you run with them. Got to make those free throws, too. We're tied up to 20 apiece, and we're coming the other way. Browning with the basketball. They work it around the outside. Well, there's Bullchild with that runner. You show it, in, but it's ripped down underneath the big guy, the hero of last night, Tabbick. There's it out. Tabbick came in last night when Cypher got foul trouble, and he had a big, big cost. Another thing we need to talk about, Ron, is Stevensville doesn't have a ton of depth. Browning going to keep running at you. They're going to wear you down. They wore down deep central last night in their victory as they finally get it inside the Cypher, and he picks up a personal on it on a Browning player. Boy, and Cypher's making the big mistake of a big guy, though, Joe. The one thing they tell you is don't put the ball on the floor. Yeah, he's six foot nine. He gets those hands up. He could be seven feet tall, but he throws it down there. Look at the crowd around him. Picks up the personal. They're throwing three on him every time he touches the ball, and that's going to be team foul uh, number five on the Indians. The other reason we were talking why Brownie wants to make you run is because it wears you down. They got a ton of depth. They are in fantastic shape. They could run all night. They're not going to get tired. They want teams to get up and down the floor and wear those legs out. Carlson with the long three. Not going to happen. Seifert comes in. He's going to clean it up, and a foul going to be called on McDonald. The opportunity for offensive putbacks are there for big number 33. You see him in the screen. He can go up and get those, and he can make Brownie have a nightmare tonight on the offensive round. Joe, sure, but the problem with it has been is Seifert has been thrown outside. We'll tell you more about that, but first, here's the uh, guess the score. If you'd like to guess the final score of this championship game, there you have it, www.omegatvp.com. Get on right now and guess the score, the final score of this one. As you see, Seifert had one more, so add one more to your score that you're going to pick there, and there you go. But let's get at it. There's the Omega TVP. Get on there. Get on the net and get the score in there. See if you can pick the state championship game. I'm challenging you, baby. Let's see what you can do. We only had that one. Cyber misses the second one. We're going the other way. Cyber with only five. But as I say, he's playing outside quite a bit, and he's not in position to get the rebounds. Well, what he's got to do is he's got to realize that. Get himself to that free throw line area. That's a great place to crash the boards from. Oh, look at nice that. Nice McDonald can't finish, and the rebound pulled out by Cypher. One shot. Got to get some completion down inside if you're Browning. You've had four opportunities, good catches inside. Missed some golden ops. Stevens wrote their first lead in a long time. 21-20. Now they're doing the right thing. They're getting in that half-court set run, throwing that ball around, taking the air out of it, not getting in that running game. They, they took that hook out of their mouth. And the Indians are... Trying to get him to move the ball a little quicker. The fans are saying, come on, pick it up, pick up the pace, run with us. They don't like this slowdown basketball. These fans know that if they start running, it's their game. And Coach Chambers, he's talking over there. He knows exactly what he wants, and this is it. Carlson brothers are playing catch. Now they bring in Travis to play with them. And they're going to reset. Two minutes to play in the half. State championship in Belgrade. Nice to have you along on Omega TV. And they throw the ball away. And he's going to fly out of bounds. Leo Bullchild on the steal. And he just he just anticipated where the ball was going to be and got there first. What amazed me is how he avoided the foul. He just had the quick stop and he bounced back. And we're coming back at it. Spoon Hunter to the right. Kicks it back to Bullchild. He gets that floater and there's going to be a foul down underneath. On the line will be Bullchild. He has six looking for more. Big John Seifert with the personal foul. Look at Bullchild. He is not going to let you block the shot. Seifert sees it coming. He knows it's there. Leo gets it out just in time. He didn't even extend his arm, Joe. He released that ball from down low and just barely missed. Three for three from the line. Now seven points. You see some of the fans, some of the faithful here. 
Stevens goes, turn the ball over, Joe, five times since the last time we gave you numbers. Browning has only done it once. And it's going the way they want it to go. Well, Browning's had scoring looks down low, and we could almost count those as turnovers because of the shot selection that they do take sometimes. I think that's a good move taking out Cypher right now, Ron. Uh, Coach Chambers realized he picked up his second personal. They just got two minutes till halftime. No sense wasting them out there. Second shot for the first time of this by Bullchild. And going the other way. Carlson brings it down across. Carson for Curley moves it back out on top. Right side. Into the hands of Travis. Playing a little catch out there. Slowing the ball down. Back over the left side. Clayton Curley out top working the ball. Looks for the lob over the top. They're just slowly just working around, see what you have, and that 1-3-1 one, one defense is pretty tough. Well, the tough thing that you have to do against that 1-3-1 one, one is you have to have some penetration like Curley's doing now, but once you do that, you see three Browning guys running right at you to try to swipe that thing away. And there's got to be somebody open. Curley has it again. Clayton Curley over the right side, kicks it over to Travis. Well, the crowd doesn't like this, but uh, Coach Chambers trying to win a state championship. He don't care what the crowd wants. And the, the uh, crowd from Browning is up there cheering. They're screaming. They're trying to trying to push Stevensville into doing something. And here's the shot, the three-pointer. But I'll tell you what, they worked and worked and worked, and Clayton Kirby gets his first points of the ball game, drains the three. That was a great possession that time. On the other end of the plate, Clayton Kirby. He has five. Boy, did he rip that one. It took Stevensville to score their three, about a minute and a half, and it took seven seconds for Browning to get their three up. I'll tell you that uh, Spoon Hunter's got that Allen Iverson look going, and uh, he's playing a lot like him here tonight. He handles the ball like Iverson. Right away. And the ball almost stolen away, but brought back out top by Travis. And uh, Clayton Curley almost lost that one, and Nelson. Again, they're out of that zone. They're out into a man-to-man. -man. They're back into the zone. 1-3-1. One, one. Looked like man-to-man -man there for a minute. Yeah, it did. The way they extended. They extend real nice. And Stevensville's not even looking. Now they're going to fire the long three at the buzzer. Not going to happen. And we're going to the locker room with nothing to sign up in the first half. 44-24. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with you in Belgrade. Subscribe, call 265-6795 or check them out online at www.haverton. Browning crowd is knowledgeable. They want the thing. Don't mess around. Three passes is probably too, too many. And get the ball up. And we saw at the end of the half, uh, Clayton Curley finally busted a, a three after some, some deliberate play. He hit four of those last night. Joe, as a player, how much do you feel he wants? tempo yet up to speed have you oh uh, no but we were doing a pretty good job uh, actually we're right where we want to be you're right where you want to be we're and right what's going to happen in the second half more of the same we're going to turn try to turn up the tempo a little bit more uh try to keep the big guy off the boards a little bit better and uh keep keep running at him okay good luck with you it's a great night for the blackfeet nation i know yeah, it is yeah it is thank you, you have a good second half We'll be back with more. Anything interesting there? Well, Browning was only 9 of 26. They only shot 34%. They had some easy gimmies that they were unable to complete, but everything else pretty balanced. Browning only one turnover. That's amazing. First shot on the bucket is going to be a little bit off by Clayton Curley, and we're going the other way. You know, the thing that stood out to me was the nine points off turnovers for Browning and nothing for the Stevensville squad. They've got to pick that one up. You're right. That's what we were talking about. Browning going to give you opportunities to score. That's right then. When, when, when they make a turnover, Stevensville's got to come back and they got to get two on the board. Probably tries to get something inside, gives it off. And uh, underneath the big guy, the guy they wanted to stop from getting the rebound, Cypher gets it in. He had seven defensive rebounds in the first half. There's his eighth of the game. They're trying to look inside to him, but he's triple teamed right away. Probably he needs to done a good job keeping him out of the ball game offensively. Well, Coach Ozer, he talked about uh, eliminating second chance opportunities, and that's something that John really has to make himself a parent with out there. Realize when the shot goes up, find a spot where no one's at and try to get that offensive put back. They're trying to get it inside. The long ball's going to go up, and uh, Trombley brings it down for the Indians. And right away, they come on the run. Oh, back over to two Trombley, and he takes it inside, and Cypher gets a hand on it, but he's going to be whistled for the foul. Yeah, 
and if you see a good picture of him, you ought to get a picture of the fans cheering for that one. Well, he came over backside as Trombley was coming in on the dribble, and Cypher just got him with the body. Nice check, but he just uh, went a little bit too far with the body. You see him coming over here. He didn't, he didn't average uh, 7.5 shot blocks uh, a, a season without getting up in the air and doing that very often. Trombley goes to the line. And he has four points in the ball game. Browning Indians jump out into a little lead and probably gives them another point and move it out a little further. Here, come, here comes that pressure right now. They, they get some scores. They're able to get that press set up. Break it by giving it to Cypher, but Cypher's got to get rid of it because they'll strip him from behind. And they did a good job. They stopped right when they got it to Big John. They pulled it back out. They didn't try to attack. They didn't go for that worm out there and see if they could get an easy two. I'm watching Cypher down inside and he's not even getting a chance to get big down there because they get a guy in front of him and a guy behind him and he not even looking for that inlet to the uh, to the post. The Brownie's almost begging you to try to come in there on the dribble so they can get a swipe. Here's a guy who's been playing tough for him inside. Can't get it to go this time as Johnson misses. And right away, the Indians come on the run. How quick did Denver Trump get up the floor that time? <laughs> he had to wait for the rest of the team. <laughs> and sit back for Bullchard. Nice pass down underneath. They're going to take it at the big guy. The other hand still going to out. I'll tell you what a great job by Edmo there. He now has eight in the ballgame, Joe. But that was slick by Dan that time. He pulled Cypher out, then he went around him with a little finger roll. And I think uh, Cypher was kind of disgusted because he thought he had him shut down. Edmo with a big move, and the fans like that one. Kind of looked like a St. Bernard chasing a mouse that time. <laughs> Carlson fires it up. He's going to get it. The foul's going to be whistled on Spoon Hunter. Alan Spoon Hunter picks up his first, and Clayton Curley. You get Clayton and Carson mixed up. That time it was Clayton. Gets a two in a little line with a chance. Now has five in the ball game. You, you got to answer Browning right there. You got to come right back. They got a couple of scores on you. And that time Clayton did a good job of getting one in the air. And the rebound stolen away, but thrown away by uh, Johnson. He had to do something with it. Caught it just as he's flying out of bounds. One thing you don't want to do is get behind this uh, Browning Indian team because then you have to run and they'll kill you. Edmo from outside, won't go. Rebound by Curley, Clayton Curley. Long pass down to Carson Curley. Carson with the layup, he gets it for two. That's an easy two you got to take there. It all started with a great rebound by Clayton Curley. Right away and answered the other way. Leo Bullchild. Bullchild rips it down. He has nine in the ball game. And here they come on the run. They're doing what they want you to do. Knocking it out of there is Butterfly. On the runaway. Down by a goal child, he has 11. And right now, if you're Stevensville, and you need a timeout, you need to slow your team down. Yeah, you do. You, you bite all of a sudden, and then Browning's up four on you. You got to stay composed right now. Set up your offense. You can see over there, Coach Chambers was saying, slow it down. He was pushing his hands down towards the floor. Let's get this thing controlled. Clayton and Carson Curley play catch, and they kick it around the horn to Travis. Back out, Travis. He looks around. They're now back out on that outside game. They're passing those threes, though, Joe. You notice they've had some good looks. Cypher can't hang on to the ball too hot, too high out of bounds, and the timeout can be whistled by Stevensville. 32 28, our score. We'll be back. Scott does not want to pick up another personal. Back in Belgrade, State 8 championship game. The Browning Indians take on Stevensville. The Indians working the ball inside. They go back out. Four minutes to play, third quarter. Browning in front by four. Back inside, Edmo. Edmo keeps it back out. Keep kicking it right back over to the hands of Spoonhunter. Spoonhunter with seven points. Browning is so great in the paint. Uh, Cypher getting frustrated. He wants to get his hands on some of those shots. But Spoonhunter going to take it away from him and use his body and the backboard and the rim and everything to keep Cypher away. And you know, they don't bring it in deep enough for Cypher to become a defensive threat, Joe. Curly Brothers playing some catch, working it around. Stevensville again, very patient, looking for something. Marston Curley, back out on around the horn. Johnson, Clayton Curley. Left side, Travis drives inside to the paint, kicks it back out. Johnson puts shot up on goal, but a foul going to be whistled on Trombley, his first. 
Watch Boone Hunter now off the dribble. Just comes through. Seifert sees him. He's trying to get him. But look at him. Look at him bring the scoop over, make the tough shot. That, that comes from playing against people that are bigger than you and understanding that. That comes from playing against kids when, when you're little and you're playing against somebody that's, that's in the 10th grade when you're in the 6th grade. And that's how they're able to do that so well. Nine points now for Tyson Johnson as he gets this one down. Looks to bring it back to a four-point ball game. And he knocks her down. Ten for Johnson. And right away, the Indians, they don't even give you time to get back on defense. They come running. And a rejection by Seifert. Boy, he went high in the air for that one. He did. He wanted that one. That was sweet for Big John. And Stevensville comes out quick. They kick it out into the flat. The three won't go, but Seifert's there. Put back is good. And that's what they have him beginning is Seifert on that putback. He has seven. He has to follow. He's got to find a spot just like he did that time. There's a spot open. He's just got to make himself available to that spot. Probably for the Indians. Now they go to the spoon hunter on the three. Not going to happen. Rebound and a foul going to be whistled. And it's going to be against, I believe, Bullchild. Yeah, Leo Bullchild going to be. Here, here we go. We got the great check by Seifert. Comes in, checks it out there, controls the ball. And then down the other end, he gets another putback. Look at him, find the spot right there. Look at those arms above everybody else. And uh, Bullchild picked up the foul, and you could hear the Boomers back out. And the ball's going the other way, and a chance to tie it up or even go ahead for Stevensville. 223 to play. Third quarter. Class A state championship game from the Billings or Belgrade, especially Vincent. I'll tell you, this place is rocking, Joe. You know, it, it is. And John Seifert's doing a better job of working down on the block. He's getting a hand up. He's getting more aggressive down there. He's pushed and shoving a little bit. And Edmo got whistled for the foul that time. Edmo saying he hit me in the eye. He threw an elbow into my eye. So Edmo picks up the foul, his first. We, we said it the last time out. We said John's got to be more aggressive down there. He was just standing with his hands almost at his side. That time he got it up, he had himself open. They work the ball in and trying to get it in bounds. Stevensville, they're going to slow her back down with two minutes to play here in the third quarter. Curley picks it over to Johnson. Back over the side of Carson Curley. Come down over on the right to Travis. They're really working the ball, trying to get something going. John Seifert inside, trying to get the ball into him. They can't do it. They're doing a good job, though. They're taking time off that clock. they got to take the air out of that thing. And John with the ball. Seifert goes high and brings it back down. And it's a tie ball game. When you're, home. when you're patient like that on offense, you're going to get shots available. How about that runner? Oh, and he switched to the left hand and just rolled it over the left. If you're Stevensville, you just come down and fire. You're not going to allow Seifert the ability to find that open area to get the offensive putback. If you take your time, he can work it around in there and find a spot that looks good to him. That time, Clayton Curley found the uh, spot and pulled down the board. Stevensville going to slow back down a minute seven. And here's Curley from way downtown on the three. Not going to happen. That's not probably the shot you want to jump. You want to be a little bit more patient. Give yourself a little bit more time. Browning Indians working it around out top. Full time. Takes it in on the runner. In and out. That maybe went almost all the way down and it came back up. Browning shooting rolls continually. They shot to 36%, somewhere around there in the first half. And they're a better shooting club than that. Clayton Curley and Travis playing catch. They're going to go for one shot. 31 seconds on the clock. They bring it out. But you know what? Spoon Hunter says, I'm not going to let you stay out there. I'm coming out to play you here. You really got to credit Steve out here in the third quarter. They've really controlled the tempo. It was 24-24 at half. They're getting a chance to go up at the start of the fourth period. Almost going away. That's a good, a great job. Spoon Hunter out there all by himself. Now the long three, Johnson knocked it down. What a three. Tyler Johnson with 13 points in the ball game. Tyson Johnson nails the three. Almost one for Browning in the buzzer. And that's the end of three. We're going to four. Stevensville out in front. Stay with us. Going with the call for you. As we go to the uh, fourth and the start of the fourth, we're going to drain it from the outside as Spoon Hunter rips it down joe every time steve eye's gone to zones boone hunters made him pay that time he knocked in his 10th point of the game this is the full court pressure we talked about at the break i think we might see browning come out of that one three one and maybe a little bit of man-to-man -man, see if they can pick up the tempo defensively 
Johnson brings it out, brings it down, and well, they're, going they're, going, back. they're going back to that yeah. zone. 1-3-1 still. And as you said, Joe, they, they can't get the tempo the way they want it. The way the score is right now, Stevensville has done what they wanted. If you're Coach Chambers, you're happy because it's not a 60-58 to 58 type game. It is it's a, a low score. You've done your job. You've controlled the tempo. Exactly. And they're not applying they're not applying that, that pressure on there. And Travis makes them pay with another three. Why is Travis a 5'8 junior rips the three, and it's a three-point lead for Stevensville. They go inside the Edmond. And the Browning Indians trying to keep it inside, and they come Trombley. Trombley can't do it. And Carson comes away, or it's uh, Clayton Curley comes away with the ball. We'll see if Coach uh, Ogier stays with this 1-3-1. One, one. I think if Steve I gets up a little bit more in this thing, you might see him come out and do man-to-man. -man. There's a long ball three. It's going to go down this time by Curley. He has eight in the ball, getting his second three-pointer. And the Indian fans aren't happy with that at all. You see the worry in that fan's face. Coming the other way, the long ball spoon on it. Oh, it's Trombley for two. He has seven. And the pressure, there's that pressure, and they knock the ball out of bounds. Boy, they get quick. Leo Bullchild had his hand in there, had his hand on that ball, and it knocked her out of bounds quick. I mean, he's such a nifty defender. He comes from behind. There's the fans shouting out directions. And he understands the game, too, because he's telling them exactly what they should be doing. The big guy, Cypher, way down the floor. Now he's playing point guard. Now kicks it off into the hands of Travis, and they're going to slow her down again. Six minutes to go on this one. 43-39. Seen on the scoreboard. Stevensville. They've done the job, Joe. They've slowed it down. They've made this a slow-paced game. The Browning Indians, as you said, they've got to step out. Now they're in the man-to-man -man defense. Seems like they're just they're coming out, but they're still going back in that one-three-one. Still three, drop one. back to a base. Well, we got a great view here of all this Boot Hunter's eyes. I, he's, he's got the, he's the courage of a warrior out there. He's just waiting for you to make a mistake. Stevensville taking their time. Oh, and all alone over there. Clayton Carson kicks up the three, won't go. Long rebound, no brought down by the Indians. Four-point lead for Stevensville, and the Indians are going to push it. Spoon Hunter. Right side, takes it in. Knocked out of there. The big boy, Cypher. And it's picked up by his teammate. They even better. He controlled it after he checked it and got it back in the hands of a player from Steve Ryan. Well, turnover. Travel going to be calling Johnson, but that was caused by the defense by Trombley. You got to watch this one, Joe. You can see it. He's reading it right now, Cypher is. He knows what's coming. He sees Boot Hunter, and he keeps it in there. He gets a handle on it, keeps it in play. Six foot nine. He's a big boy. There's a shot on the runner. That's that floater the bull child does, Joe, that you like so well. And he knocks it down when his team needs it. And a steal by the Indians. Spot up the three. Bull child rocks the house. And Browning's in front by one. Just like that, they score in spurts. Defensive pressure all over the place. Clayton Carl. Clayton gets it over. Johnson. Back up Clayton. And now a one-point lead for the Indians. Boy, they turned it around five points that quick. <laughs> they did. Travis. Stephensville again. They're being smart. They're, they're pulling it back out. Not going to get caught up in there. You see what happens when you get caught in the game with Browning. They just turn it around on you. They score five points, and you watch. Working them back around. They have the openings, but they're passing on them. Yep. Clayton gets it. Clayton Curley with his third three-pointer. Now 11 points. And back to a two-point lead for Stevensville. On the other way. Edmo tries a three. That's one of those situations where if you're Browning, Dan Edmo not their best three-point shooter, and they do. They give you an opportunity to get back into this thing. You were up by, you were, you were down by one. Now you're up by two. Now you got another opportunity. You got to score on this possession. Uh, we get a great look at Spoon Hunter when he comes over here. I mean, he is so intense out there, and he works hard. He works twice as hard as anybody else on defense. Well, he's all over the place. See him come out, number 32, Spoon Hunter. Put some pressure on the ball, stolen away, but picked up. Nice job by Carson Curley, picking up the loose ball, keeping the line for Stevensville. Kick it out. Curley, long ball, going to be off the mark. Ball clears it away. The Indians on the run. We got a whistle. 
and a timeout going to be called by Coach Auger. So the Browning Indians take the timeout as they trail Stevensville. Stay with us. We'll be back. As Stevensville leads Browning 46-44, Joe McClappy, Ron Davis, Dean Conklin on the call. And, you know, you just made a good point. It looked like the Indians were going in for an easy layup, and the coach called a timeout on the sideline. Stopped their own guy from scoring on that one. Well, it used to be that the coach could not do that. The player had to call the timeout, but now with the rule change, they allow for that to happen. That might have hurt Browning that time. And during the timeout, Butterfly came into the ball game for the Indians and working the ball hard over there. Goldchild dishes it off. And a nice finish by Edmo. Edmo with 10 points. Where fans could not ask for more than this. What a game. I get caught up watching it sometimes here as Clayton Curley brings that on top. Curley looking to get it off to his brother. Carson will bring it back out top to Clayton and they're going to set her back up. Still that 1-3-1 one, one defense, Joe. Looks like they're pulling it out. Uh, Coach was trying to pull his, his guys out now. Looks like uh, Boone Hunter is what he wanted. He won all the down top at the point. Actually, he, yeah, he was down on the side and they brought him back out on top for a little pressure on. And they just keep it on top and say, hey, we, we've got plenty of time. There's 2.17 to play. And the Browning fans start booing. And a foul's going to be called on Boone Hunter. They're a little too aggressive. That's his second person. Only the 15 foul, Ron. With all this uh, holding the ball, we haven't seen a lot of personal fouls out there for, for either team. Only one team foul on Stevensville. That could be a bonus, or that could be tragedy down the end. Yeah, you never, you, you may need those fouls and could be in trouble a little bit later. Stevensville. Clayton Brothers playing a little catch now to bring it back in. I think both teams like the chance of winning this thing on one possession. And that's my, what it comes down to be. Two minutes to go on this one. Stevensville just playing catch out there. They said, hey, we'll wait for you to give us something. They're bound to determine to pull this thing out. Who's going to give? Well, you're going to pull out of the 1-3-1. One, one. Looks like they have. Now they bring it back in. Carson Curley takes the ball. He moves out on top. Now they come out. Oger said, get out of it. Come on out. He's in there watching him over there, waving his hands. Trying to get his guys to come out and play defense. Stevensville saying, hey, we're going to just play for the last shot. We only have to burn a minute 26 now. Long pass underneath the Cypher. Cypher underneath. He gets it, and he's fouled. The big guy, John Cypher, gets the ball. He'll go to the line. Foul's going to be called on. Who did they get the foul on? Number 52, Edmo. Edmo, and these are the biggest points of the game. Cypher with the post up. The foul from behind by Edmo, and now big John at the line. And he's one for two from the line. With the first 12 points, he doesn't get it. Rebound pops out of the Indians. And who comes out of it but Spoon Hunter? And he's on the run. Spoon Hunter steps back out, says, let's see, threes are back here. I gotta go back there. Gives it off to Bullchild. He goes inside, gets the bucket. Over the top of Seifert. What a shot, Joe. 18 for Bullchild. We got a timeout called by Stevensville. Well, they were in trouble, so we got a timeout on the floor. We'll take this one. Over, wow. That tied it up at 48, back in action. Stevensville, Clayton Kerr. Curley over to his brother, Carson Curley. Man to man right now by Browning. Browning's come back out of it. See the clock ticking there. Stevensville working around for the last shot. Over to Carson Curley. Kicks it back out to his brother, Clayton. 35 seconds. Could we be looking at overtime, Joe? They're looking to get it into Cypher. Can't get it. Back out to Johnson, who's had three three-pointers. Now he's way out. 26 seconds. So you're going to have to follow us. Now over to Carson Curley. Stevensville has it just the way they wanted it. Looking to make it their first win in three tries. In a row. Stevensville has the ball. Almost stole the win. Knocked out of bounds. And it was a good call. I saw it right here. Bullchild reached in and knocked away from behind. And we've got a timeout called by Stevensville. So with a timeout on the floor, 10 seconds to play. Who have been a part of Montana, and this is one of the great ones. Cypher gets the inbounds off of Curley. Curley comes in, and he's fouled. What a great play set up by Coach Chambers that time. Great execution. We knew something was up. We saw Cypher underneath the basket all by himself. And everybody else is out at half court. Cypher came up, got the pass, made the quick pass off to Curley. Look at this great execution, Ron. Curley's had one great game. There's the pass from Cypher. Curley got a foul. He's got to make a pay at the line. Butterfly with the foul. Clayton Curley is 4 for 1 from the line. 
He'll shoot to right at the Browning turn section. I mean, everybody from Browning, if you get a shot from Rick's camera at the other end, shooting towards the free throw shooter at the other end, it's amazing. We got a timeout going to be called for by Stevensville. And we're going to take a timeout as well. Don't go away. Well, you're back to the mayhem that's the Belgrade Special Event Center. The shot by Curley is off the mark again. The rebound pulled down by the Browning Indians. And I'm going to tell you what, this place was rocking. We had a shot of that uh, during the free throw. Joe, it was amazing, the noise that went up all of a sudden. Here. Oh, the decibel level was uh, extremely high as uh, poor Clayton Curley shooting right into the face of the Browning student cheering section, and they were just jumping up and down and screaming and wailing their arms. <laughs> Clayton did not have a prayer. There it is right there. That's the cheering section he was facing when he was putting the shot up. And uh, I'll tell you what, Clayton Curley, you can't count him off on that one. He had a tough go there. But right now, the Indians joke with 4.89 seconds to go. Their type of basketball, they like to run and gun. Stevens is going to clap with some pressure on him right away. But this is the kind of thing the Browning Indians wanted to have. Stevensville's got to be careful how much pressure they put on it. But the good thing is for Stevensville, they only got one team foul. I, I, I'm going to foul as much as I can to, to make this thing go down. Right away when it comes in, reach foul. They get it up, reach foul. Get this thing down to one second and make it hard for Browning. Browning pushes this thing up the floor. They're going to get a chance to go to the free throw line and win this thing at the you line. Know, you just made a great call. You throw it in bounds, foul. Throw it in bounds, foul. For a second each time. You know, and that's come from the fact that, and, and they got to be aware of that if they're Browning. they got to just catch it and go because you're going to get fouled immediately. So Browning brings everybody up. I'm sure that they've set up, old coach Oger has set up a great play. They bring in Biles. They kick it back over to Spoon Hunter. So they can't do that. Spoon Hunter puts up the long ball and it will go. And we're going overtime, baby. The Class A state championship game, nothing decided in regulation. Boy, did Spoon Hunter put that up just a second too early. And they over here with a timeout. And uh, we still have some more time. They put four minutes back up of that clock, Joe. We're going to overtime. 24-24 at half. There. Oh, and, and the entire Browning section was up. And I think they I have think about every half section the in here. There. <laughs> they went to every team that lost and bought every ticket up they could because this place is packed. That was sitting in, the, in front of the Butte Central section today. And as soon as Butte Central lost to Dillon, Browning fans flooded the section and said, hey, we want to buy your tickets for tonight, hoping that some of the BC fans were going home. And I, I'm noticing there is some Browning fans over there. Cypher controls the tip. Johnson will have it. And we're in overtime. Carson fights back out to Johnson. Johnson looks, kicks it way out top. And they're going to slow it down. Man-to-man -man defense, Joe. They go into Cypher. Touch pass back to Carson. Carson back to Cypher. Cypher goes inside, puts it up, not going to happen, he's going to go to the line. Nice recognition that time by Stevensville. Good pass from Carson Curley down low to Cypher. Realize what exists right now when you have Cypher on the block with a player that's probably six inches shorter than him. Butterfly picks up his fourth personal foul. At the line, looking at that, that noise. Cypher in and out. I'm telling you what, that is just an amazing sight. Let's take a look at Cypher from behind here. Now, there he is, number 33, shooting. And you can tell if ball wasn't going, but a great job on the board by Curley. And they bring it back up and set it up outside. Boy, that is one top kid. Clayton Curley has got some huge boards tonight. Curley kicks it over on the far side to Johnson. They got Curley. Carson. Curley over back to his brother. Just sticking out, back to that 1-3-1. One, one. Here's a floater from Johnson. And if that floater belongs to the Indians, they're the ones that know how to do the runner. That one didn't go. And throw it away. The Indians chase it down, not going to happen. One went one way, one ball went the other, Joe. It's Boot Hunter Bullchild talking it over with each other. They got that ESP, uh, as we've seen with a lot of players. They can read each other's minds out there. That's the first turnover by Browning in the second half. Unbelievable. That's amazing. And it's in overtime. Three minutes to go in OT. Stevensville with the ball. Still knotted up at 48. Inside drive. Now kick it back out. We got a foul going to be called over there. This is on Bullchild, his second personal. Now that might be a smart thing to do if you're Browning right now because it forces Stevensville at least to take some time and go to the free throw line because they're shooting into that nutty Browning crowd behind, behind that backboard. Tyson Johnson with 13 points. But he's Two of three from the line. And again, it doesn't happen. 
and Butterfly clears it away. Browning Indians, their first run down the floor. They're going to set it up in OT. Tomley puts it up, knocks it down. And he's going for his defense, but Tremblay now has nine points, and he's got the job done for him here. Delbert's great at that. That little pump fake and the shot at the 15-foot jumper is, is really money for Delbert when he can get it off in time. Joe, a lot of the uh, Indian fans want it over back there, but the rules have changed on that. Yeah, they have. Uh, and I, I understand Butte Central had a, a costly call last night in similar situation. Travel going to be called. Travel was thinking about it too much and took an extra step. It's a huge possession right now by Browning. 2.17 to go. It forces Stevensville to come down and score quickly. That's they right. can't pull it out. Stevensville's not going to be able to sit back. They've got to come out and make things happen. Coach Chambers telling them to come out and play defense tight. Get on it. That's the ball. And there's the steal. Who's ball that's back to the Indians? And they love this scattered stuff. Got to be traveling for you. That to them is their offense, Joe. They get confusion and take advantage of it. Chaos basketball at its best. Johnson. Picks up the loose ball. Carson Curley back out top. They can't sit out, though. They've got to go. 148. They've got to run the offense. It forces you to have to come in with some penetration right now to free someone up for a jumper. You can't sit back when you're losing by four. Curley takes the stroke off his brother and comes to the wall. And they have the three. Had it been able to go. Carson ripped it. But the travel got there first. Now they have to press. This is what Brownie wants. Pick it up the floor. Here come the Indians. Look at the Poon Hunter. He just puts his head down and goes. And he's going to be fouled. And that's something, you know, right now, Joe, you said earlier, you could have, maybe if you're Stevensville, you're wishing you would have fouled more earlier. Yeah, they had the advantage at the end of regulation. Now it comes back to Hanna. Look at the great ball handling by Spoon Hunter. He might be the best ball handler I've seen in the state. They move quick in there. Coach O'Dare wants to talk it over for the Indians, so we'll take a break as well. Stay with us. It's overtime at the state championship. If it's in overtime, 52-48, Browning out in front. And Joe, missed free throws may be the story to this one. Dean Conklin said, mentioned to us at that timeout, five straight misses. That nutty group back there causing a lot of those misses. And one of those was a one-on-one. Browning doing a good job. Now they're spreading out. They're going to burn time. So hey, what's really going on this one? You can't foul us if you can't catch us. They played catch and pass better than anybody. They took 25 seconds off the clock there. Levi was coming out trying to foul. They had so many fouls to give. That's only their 13th foul. They play that, like you said, that catch and throw thing so fast, there's nothing you can do about it. Stevensville gets the steal. A big one for them right now. Big John Seifert with the steal. Coming the other way, but they've got to make something happen right away. They don't have time to sit out. 103, down by four. Three-pointer Johnson high in the air. He's going to miss it all. And we're going the other way. you got a foul. you got a foul right now. Time's ticking. Full time. It's going to be foul. And Carson currently gets the foul. You know, if Stevensville can't get back into this one, Joe, they've already lost two in a row. This could be their third trip to the state championship in a row. And a timeout called by Coach Chambers. He's got to set something up with his squad. 52, 48, Browning in overtime. And Joe, I'll tell you right now, there's not a person in this place sitting down but you and I. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> right. They got to foul quickly right now. Stevensville does. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Be as aggressive as you can. If you can. They know that's what you're trying to do. And there's the Browning cheering section. These folks are responsible for the 0 for 5 trip to the line here in the fourth quarter. There's some other fans, some of the guys that joined the game at the other end over at the... Uh, Stevensville side of things, but that group that we saw down there, they're the ones responsible for this because they've done a great job of making noise and getting Stevensville to miss when they went to the line. We're going to find out just how good Browning is at handling the ball. They have to inbound underneath their own bucket. That's a tough place to get it inbound from. You see Spoon Hunter. Good look at him as they get ready to bring it inbound. Looking to go, looking to go. They get a backdoor. Trombley for two. Trombley sneaks in the back door. He has 13. So much for taking time off the clock. Right away, Johnson brings it down. Kicks it over to Carson. To play, play it Curley. Puts up the spin around. Stevensville's totally scrambled now. How about the defense by Trombley that time? Boy, he made a great defensive play after making a great bucket. 36 seconds to go. Six point difference. Long pass. Trombley, he's going to be fouled. Trombley will go to, no, he won't go to line. That's only team foul number five. 
54-48 overtime. There you see Coach Ogier. And as Spoon Hunter gets the ball, he's going to be fouled. That's only team foul number six now. This one's going to be whistled on Travis, his first. Actually, it's his second. And six team fouls. So now we'll put him in line with 30 seconds. See Coach Chambers. Been here third time in a row. Looked like they had it in regulation. The old OT and his team trails by six. Inbounds. His foot now. He's going to be his foot hunters fouled right away. And he'll go to the line and shoot 101. Joe, it's a, just amazing the, the, the way the speed of this game picked up to overtime. Stevensville lost control of the tempo. They really did, and I think it had to do a lot with that man-to-man -man defense that Browning came out. And you can see the Browning fans. They are they think they got this one in the bag right now. And if Alden Spoonhunter makes it, I might be agreeing with them. Blackfoot Nation's having a celebration tonight with a win here. And Spoonhunter goes along, he has 10 points. Look at the first trip to the line for him. Finish her off here with this one. Browning Indians third at the Central A Divisional. Lost a heartbreaker in the opening. Put it back together. Got it done, and uh, they're sitting here looking to win a state championship. Spoonhunter misses on this one, but he gets the rebound. Kicks it over the hands of his partner. Underneath they go, and a foul's going to be called on Seifert. Seifert's called for the foul down underneath and going to the line. It's, it's going to be a butterfly. He's one for one from the line. He has one point. Most teams would pull it out, but we'll see right here. Browning just keeps attacking you. The tempo full speed the whole time. See how quick Butterfly got that thing out of his hands. All he wanted to do was get fouled. He saw Seifert flying at him, said, okay, let's get out of here. There you go. Butterfly. Now with two points in the ball game. 56-48. The Browning Indians are starting to celebrate. Coach O'Jerry just watching. He took a deep breath over there. Misses the second one. Rebound Stevensville. Stevensville brings it down the floor. Browning getting away from him. They kick it off to Carson. Back out top to Clayton. Clayton Curley, long three. Not going to happen. Rebound follow. Ball's loose. Carson has it taken it away. Spoonhunter just throws it down court. Says chase after it. And it's going to be Stevensville basketball as it was uh, thrown the long distance and then we got to it, but the Browning Indians have already started to celebrate. The Indians were running around, their hands in the air, show number one. Long ball, three-pointer, Carson Curley. Count it. So Carson Curley puts it down here. And that's it. The Browning Indians are the Class A state champions as the celebration on the floor has begun. The Indians win it here in overtime, 56-51. What a heartbreaker this is Stevensville. Their third trip to the state championship in a row, and they couldn't get it. You got it. You got to admire Browning and everything that they put forth in this game. Complete team effort out there. They played the game to, to their perfection towards the end there. They got the tempo in their favor. They're number one. And they earned it tonight. What a great game. And they're giving Stevensville the high fives. They go through the line there. You see Coach Auger. What a victory for the Browning Indians in overtime. Joe, I don't think I've seen a better state championship game. They had everything. Look at you have great guards in Browning. As you see one of them there, Spoon Hunter, Bull Child. And you have the great big man for Stevensville and John Seifert. Browning Indians getting ready to tear down the nets here at the uh, Special Events Center. As, uh, the manager goes up and gets, he's going to cut it down for him. I, I think it's the ladder thing. Now. You can't let the kids go up anymore. They cut her down for the Indians. Steve, the man, our man Steve from Belgrade, he does a great job running this facility. And the Indians, Butterfly has it. They all have the net, and they're pretty fired up about it. And the little fans and the big fans of the Browning Indians are celebrating tonight. The Blackfoot Nation as a state championship. It's so great when your school wins a championship like that. That little guy's going to remember it. He's going to be out working on his game. Coach O'Jarrett still waiting for it to sink in. And just enjoying the moment. Dean Conklin has some special guests down underneath the basket. Dean Conklin with special guests. Let's start with Leo Bullchild because, Leo, you were the guy who put the life in your team last night in the second half. And you had another spree tonight. You hit five quick points. What's it feel like 
to win this championship. The greatest feeling, it's the best feeling ever, man. The greatest feeling I ever had. The best feeling I ever had. And uh, Delbert Trombley, uh, you worked hard on, you're supposed to be the defensive guy, but you were the guy who scored three of them in overtime. Uh, um, I just, uh, I just wanted to win it. I just wanted to win, man. We got the wall! And Mr. Spoon Hunter, you were out there on the point on that 1-3-1 one, one defense. You worked hard all night. How can you go so long chasing the ball so hard? I'm a runner, baby. We're Indians. Indians are runners, baby. We, just, we won cross country in state. Now we bring it to the basketball, baby. Starting the dynasty, starting the dynasty. Well, let's talk about that because for the Blackfeet Nation, this is another triumph, isn't it? Yeah, true that, true that. This is uh, history of beats us off every 20 years. This is the 21st year, my number 21, baby. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything to you that Hart Butte, also a Blackfeet uh, team, holds on the front seat. Those are my brothers. They're going to do the same thing they did last year. Repeat. My boys, this is my last year. Thank them. They're going to do the same thing for me. This is, it's just all family, baby. Black Bee Nation. That's how we do it. Okay. And if we can get uh, Coach Arger to come in. Coach, Coach, when we talked to you at halftime, you were feeling pretty confident about what your team would be able to do in the second half. And, and it was a slowdown game that Stevensville kept the pace. Right. How, did, how did you turn the, the tide? Well, we didn't mind the slowdown because as long as we're close, we always feel we have a chance. And uh, we play hard. We play hard. Kids never give up. They never give up. And, and you've seen what happens when they don't give up. Well, I, I mentioned to, to, to Spoon Hunter that this is a really another triumph for the Blackfeet Nation. And Hartview wins the Class C, you win the Class A. How, how is life up there uh, in the Browning area? It's pretty good right now. It's pretty good. Okay, congratulations on the Class A championship. And we'll be back with more after this. in Butte to Dillon. Last year they lost in Billings to Colstrip. This year in Belgrade they lose to the Browning Indians. And uh, Joe, let me throw this to you first, because it was a, it was a great uh, turnaround by, uh, by Browning. But what about the play of John Seifert tonight? For three years we've watched him in the championship game. I thought he showed great maturity. He really stepped it up in the second half, pulled down some big offensive boards. He's a big part of the thing for Stevensville over the years as we see the Dillon Graham going in front of us here. He's a big part of Stevensville. And I, I think when you play in a tournament, sometimes the best team doesn't always win the tournament. It's a team that's playing the best at that time. And I think the fact that Stevensville's been here three times shows that they have a great system over there. They're just having some hard luck. They're running into teams that are on fire when they get to the championship. Your impressions of tonight, Ron, because this has been a wild, raucous crowd. The feet were thumping on the floor and then the shouting. 500 fans are making a traveling call signal. Your, your thoughts? I'll tell you what, this is the first game I have seen where the sixth man, that would be the fans standing right up here, made the difference in this game. Five times, Stevensville went to the line and missed on this end in the fourth quarter on free throws. Two of those free throws, and I hate to say put it on one guy's shoulders, but Curley went to the line with two in regulation in the last 30 seconds. Had he made those, they could have won in regulation. I think it's the sixth man that won it for him. These Indian fans, they know basketball, and they proved it tonight because I'll tell you what, they took it right to them. And they were putting the pressure on Stevensville even early in the game when they were down there in the slowdown trying to get him fired up to get him to run as we were talking about at halftime. And I really think that sixth man, the, the, the fans for Browning, definitely proved that the nation played together tonight. Well, let's say this for our friend Steve D. Uh, Steve, we don't know if you're out of the hospital yet or not, but uh, when we started this business a couple of years ago, what we saw tonight is exactly what we thought would be the epitome of great high school basketball, both Stevensville and the Browning Indians. So uh, I hope this helps you feel a little bit better. For all of our crew here at Omega, we're looking to uh, the Frontier Conference Tournament this weekend. Westminster will host the men's tournament. Lewis Clark State will host the women. And then we come back to Montana for three days of double A basketball at Great Falls, Class B at Bozeman, and then Class C. Street Glass Street had this weekend off. Mike was in the crowd tonight saying we all pull together.
We've had a wonderful uh, evening of an exciting evening of basketball on the Wayland Mon Montana High School Championships. So for Ron Davis, Joe McClafferty, all of the Omega crew, I'm Dean Conklin saying thanks for being with us tonight. Pretty good stuff, wasn't it? quarter Stevensville gets it inside for the basket and the foul but they missed the free throw Yellow Jackets up two but Browning next possession they tied up Leo Bolchild hits a tough shot 48-48 a minute to go final seconds Browning a chance to win it but Alvin Spoonauer just misses we're headed for OT in the overtime Browning picks up the loose ball and Damon Trombley lays it in Indians lead 52-48 then Browning strikes off the out-of-bounds play Trombley goes back door that's too easy and that's pretty much iced it for the Indians. Browning wins the 2001 Class A State Championship, 56-51 in overtime over Stevensville. Their third trip to the state championship in a row, and they couldn't get it. You got to you got to admire Browning and everything that they put forth in this game. Complete team effort out there. They played the game to, to their perfection towards the end there. They got the tempo in their favor. They're number one. Tonight, what a great game! And they're giving Stevensville the high fives. They go through line. There you see Coach Ogier. What a victory for the Browning Indians in overtime. Joe, I don't think I've seen a better state championship game. It had everything. Look at you had great guards in Browning. As you see one of them there, Spoon Hunter, Bull Child, and you had the great big man for Stevensville with John Cypher. Browning Indians get ready to tear down the nets here at the uh, Special Event Center. Uh, the manager goes up and gets the, he's going to cut it down for him. I, I think it's a little ladder thing. Now. You can't let the kids go up there. They're cutting it down for the Indians. Steve, the man, our man Steve from Belgrade, he does a great job running this facility. The Indians, Butterfly has it. They all have the net, and they're pretty fired up about it. And the little fans and the big fans of the Browning Indians are celebrating tonight. The Blackfoot Nation. As a state championship. It's so great when your school wins the championship like that. That little guy's going to remember it. He's going to be out working on his game. Coach Ogier still waiting for it to sink in. And just enjoying the moment. Dean Conklin has some special guests down underneath the basket. Dean Conklin last night in the second half. And you had another spree tonight. You hit five quick points. What's it feel like to win this championship? The greatest feeling. It's the best feeling ever, man. It's the greatest feeling I ever had. Best feeling I ever had. And uh, Delbert Trombley, uh, you worked hard off. You're supposed to be the defensive guy, but you were the guy who scored three of them in overtime. Uh, uh, I just, uh, I just wanted to win it. I just wanted to win, guys. We got the ball. And Mr. Spoon Hunter, you were out there on the point on that one-three-one defense. You worked hard all night. How can you go so long chasing the ball so hard? I'm a runner, baby. We're Indians. Indians are runners, baby. We, just, we won cross country state. Now we're bringing it to the basketball, baby. Starting the dynasty, starting the dynasty. Well, let's talk about that because for the Blackfeet Nation, this is another triumph, isn't it? Yeah, true that, true that. This is uh, history of peace. It's up every 20 years. This is the 21st year, my number 21, baby. Yeah. Now, does it mean anything to you that Hart Butte, also a Blackfeet uh, team, those are my brothers. Those are my brothers. They're going to do the same thing they did last year. Repeat, my boys, this is my last year. Thank them. They're going to do the same thing for me. This is it's just all family, baby. Blackfeet Nation, that's how we do. Okay. And if we can get uh, Coach Arger to come in. Coach, Coach, when we talked to you at halftime, you were feeling pretty confident about what your team would be able to do in the second half. And, and it was a slowdown game that Stevensville kept the pace. Right. How did, how did you turn the, the tide? Well, we didn't mind the slowdown because as long as we're close, we always feel we have a chance. And uh, we play hard. We play hard. Kids never give up. They never give up. And, and you've seen what happens when they don't give up. Well, I, I mentioned to, to Spoon Hunter that this is a really another triumph for the Blackfeet Nation. And Hartview wins the Class C, you win the Class A. How, how is life up there in the Browning area? 
pretty good right now. Pretty good. Okay, congratulations.